No, it's not. And it's uh, to a certain extent also true because you, you have, a, let's say, a bank and it secures itself, but it has a huge supply chain. Mm -hmm. And it's in the supply chain, they also have access to the bank's various systems. So you need to have a comprehensive security system. And that is actually also what we are trying to, to advocate for is that it's not enough that you think you can ring fence yourself because you cannot. It's also a global problem. Here's, a, here's one for you. Who are we cyber securing against? Because we often think of Russian bears and trolls and all these names that come up from North Korea and what have you. But very often, it's other companies, other Western companies, other Western countries as well. And famously, uh, there were, were cybersecurity issues with the US looking at Mrs. Uh, Merkel and stuff. So who are we protecting against here? I think we are protecting against everything, right? So at least uh, it's, it's the idea that we have is that you need to protect for everything. Mm. So we, we, we might focus in the center on, on cybercrime and not nation state activities, but you still need to make security for anything that is possible. And nation state activity and other companies' activity is, of course, also possible. Uh, can I ask you about data protection? Um, we had Ralph Hammers up here from ING Bank, and he said one of the challenges with the new GDPR rules is that actually it makes it quite difficult for the bank to be able to put together a profile of someone who may be trying to open an account or using the bank for illegal purposes. Um, is there a Jekyll and Hyde aspect to data control measures that are now being introduced and how does that affect how we might best protect ourselves? It's, it's actually also true. Uh, you have this uh, tight balance between security and, and privacy and you need to find the right balance. If you have full privacy, you have no security and the other way around. So what is, is, is at stake here is that to make a profile, you need to have access to all these data. And the way that you can solve that uh, under the recent GDPR regime is very, very difficult for banks. Mm. But we are working together with some banks to find a, a way where we can use what is called homomorphic encryption mm. on these data. In that way, you can actually search without revealing anything, but you can find patterns, matches and other things. In that way, you have both privacy and security. Look, um, I've got a phone here. It's, it doesn't happen to be a Huawei phone, but a lot of the conversation here at this event this year <clears throat> has been about Huawei and whether it's appropriate that they have been locked out of some 5G um, opportunities in countries around the world. Um, is it possible that we do have embedded in some of these handsets chips that are revealing to a government allocation and information about us that could be used against us? I think uh, at the internet everything is possible. I haven't seen any evidence of that uh, with, with, with this company and it's not something that we are particularly you know, looking into as, as an area but I think it's an important discussion that we need to have.